the long-awaited release date for the Boruto time skip through the official Mega Channel was revealed after a long period of waiting. It already has been released on August 20th, 2023, so the wait is over. Needless to say, I've been excited about this release. So let's explore the interesting world of expectations as we look at what might happen in the future of the manga, both from my perspective and that of enthusiastic Boruto fans. But before we dive into these discussions, I would like to ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Since the captivating scene that appeared on our screen seven years ago, fans have been buzzing with excitement for the revelation of the long-promised time skip. I'm sure you've come across many videos that analyze this concept since Chapter 80 of the Boruto manga was published. Recent parts of the Boruto manga have grabbed our attention with their interesting plot developments, including the role changes of Boruto and Kawaki, as well as their intense training during the time skip. Looking back at the important moments set by Naruto's time skip training, it definitely left a lasting impression as a significant and iconic part of the story. Of course, I hold the upcoming Boruto series to not lower standards than this. In the context of this time skip, it's important to fully understand the details of this concept, as it can be seen in many different ways. A time skip doesn't have a fixed duration. It can include days, weeks, months, or even years. For example, think about a three-month time skip within a larger two-and-a-half-year period, which happened during Naruto's training with Jiraiya. Going back to the Naruto manga, we see Shakurya formal request to become Tsunade's apprentice in chapter 236. Moving to chapter 237, Jiraiya makes plans to start training with Naruto after he recovers. And chapter 238 shows Naruto leaving the hospital, showing Sakura's impressive progress over two months. In short, this tells us that three months have passed since Sakura made her request in chapter 236. The last chapter, chapter 238, marks the end of the notable time skip. I bring up this topic to give context to the common view of the Boruto time skip as typically lasting from two to four years, shown by the noticeably mature appearances of Boruto and Kawaki in the flash forward scene. However, to manage expectations, it's possible that Boruto Chapter 81 might have a more modest three month jump, similar to what Naruto Chapter 238 did. This brings us to the idea that Chapter 82 might be the big turning point for the story. While the exact sequence might not match this idea perfectly, it's a possible sequence of events. Looking at the designs Kishimoto created for Boruto and Sarada, you might think that the time span is longer than just three months, suggesting a longer period. Alternatively, Kishimoto's decision to show these designs beforehand might be a strategic move, similar to what was done with Boruto and Kawaki's designs before they were introduced into the story. Indeed, these designs were revealed as early as February after Chapter 77 was published and before Chapter 78 by extension. A similar pattern could be followed for the recent reveal of Sarada's new design. Moving to the exciting world of speculation, let's talk about the expectations for the time skip. In the previous chapter, readers saw Boruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha deciding to leave the village, wanting to improve their skills and achieve their goals. Boruto's goal is to prove he can change his destiny and bring his brother back to the right path. On the other hand, Sasuke's goal is to protect the village and save his friend, the 7th Hokage, Naruto Uzumaki. In this context, we have to recognize the characters who might not have had a big role but still have potential. One such character is Kakashi, whose role might become more important. You might wonder why Kakashi is relevant especially when he hasn't been a big part of the main story. The reason for considering this is that Naruto's death seems likely. If this happens, there might be a memorial service for him, and a new Hokage could be appointed, or a former Hokage could return. In this situation, Kakashi could become a key figure, playing a vital role in Boruto's story. His role might not be as big as before, but it's a possibility given his importance in the series. It's worth noting that Kakashi is more powerful now compared to the war arc in Naruto. Except for the Susanoo, he's the strongest version of himself, which should be considered. Additionally, Kishimoto has said that Kakashi will have a bigger role in the story, which adds more weight to this idea. The timing seems right since Kakashi hasn't been a big part of the Boruto manga, even though he's appeared in the anime during training and graduation exams. He's also given advice to Naruto when needed. Now let's talk about the different aspect of the story, the expectations for the time skip. Some of these expectations involve the possibility of forming a team to counter Kawaki's influence. The Boruto universe is under Ada's control, with Kawaki seen as the good person and Boruto as the potential killer of a future Hokage. In this confusing situation, Boruto and Sasuke are the exceptions who don't follow the norm. However, even they might need more help to rescue the seventh Hokage. In this context, it's possible they could ally with rogue ninjas, bringing together different forces against the established rules. 
This group might include Sarada, who can resist Ada's manipulation using her Mangyeko Sharingan. This scenario offers exciting possibilities for the story. In the tradition of storytelling, a time skip usually means the characters become stronger, and this applies to Boruto's story too. When looking at the Naruto anime, it feels like Naruto's growth after the time skip could have been more noticeable, so it's reasonable to expect the same for Boruto's character development. Speculating about the future includes ideas like Boruto learning new jutsus, using his karma more effectively, and gaining better control over the Momoshiki entity inside him. Another interesting idea is Sasuke teaching Boruto the summoning jutsu for snakes. Another option is introducing Sagemo to Boruto's abilities. But adding Sagemo to Boruto's journey might not be straightforward given the current power levels of characters. Boruto included despite these challenges, there's still hope for these possibilities. Alongside the focus on Boruto, we have to think about the other characters too. This brings us to Mitsuki and Sarada, who might also become more powerful. Sarada might master her Mangyeko Sharingan and learn new jutsus. Mitsuki's possibilities include better use of his Sage mode or even more advanced training from Orochimaru or Kakashi. Kishimoto's recent portrayals of Team 7 show hints at their growing abilities, making these potential enhancements even more interesting. Among all this, we can't forget Konohamaru. It's clear that the groundwork has been laid for Konohamaru to become Hokage and mentor for Team 7. For this to happen, Konohamaru needs key victories to regain his standing and popularity. Fans feel that Konohamaru's potential hasn't been fully realized since he lost to strong opponents, making him seem less powerful. To change this perception, he needs to become much stronger. All of these thoughts consider not just individual characters but also broader story dynamics and arcs. Now let's shift our focus to a different aspect of the story, Himawari's role. It's likely that Himawari will become more important during the upcoming time skip. Hints of this were seen when Daemon mentioned feeling a hidden power in Himawari. This foreshadows a bigger role for her in the future. This idea gains more weight when we remember the time Himawari unlocked the Byakugan when she was angry, accidentally incapacitating Naruto and Kurama. This shows her potential, giving a glimpse of what she might achieve as an adult. So the possibility of Himawari having a significant role in the time skip is exciting. Being part of the Uzumaki clan and dealing with Naruto and Hinata's absence, Himawari's journey toward greater strength in every way is a promising part of the story. Her growth has the potential for a meaningful transformation, adding to the variety of character arcs in the story. Amidst all this, we shouldn't forget the villains whose role is crucial to the story's flow. Just like the heroes change and grow, we can't expect the same from the villains. In this context, the character of Code offers an interesting opportunity. While some people have doubts about Code being the main villain, this doesn't mean he can't develop and become more significant. Even though he lost to Damon despite using his full power, Code's setbacks can be seen as opportunities for character development. This highlights the theme the villains don't always succeed. Including new and unexplored antagonists could add depth and complexity to the story, making it even more appealing. It's essential to remember that stories like Boruto's are made up of various threads woven together. Each character and each event contributes to the intricate tapestry that forms the narrative. We often find ourselves drawn into the lives of these fictional individuals, rooting for them, empathizing with their struggles, and rejoicing in their triumphs. Looking back at the story's beginning, we see Boruto as a spirited young ninja navigating life's challenges while being the son of the seventh Hokage. The character development he's undergone is both intriguing and relatable. We've witnessed Boruto's journey as he forged new bonds, faced adversity, and sought to carve out his unique path in a world shaped by his father's legacy. Sasuke has likewise evolved from his days as a troubled youth seeking vengeance to his role as a mentor and protector. Sasuke's transformation reflects the multi-layered nature of growth and redemption. The story's exploration of his motivations and choices adds layers of understanding to his character. The landscape of Boruto is rich with opportunities for creative storytelling the potential relationships, the unforeseen challenges, and the unexpected alliances. Each of these elements contributes to the dynamic that keeps us engaged. In this narrative journey, we are not merely spectators, we are participants finding connections and insights that resonate with our lives. As we anticipate the upcoming developments, let's remember that the heart of the story lies in the experiences, emotions, and aspirations of its characters. Through their struggles and achievements, we find moments that reflect our own human experiences. To conclude, I've shared these thoughts and reflections for you to consider. Your perspective on these ideas is important, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on these matters. If you have your own theories, feel free to share them in the comments, creating an exciting exchange of ideas. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and make sure to turn on notifications to stay updated on our latest videos.